I am one of the owners of Simple Surrogacy. We're a full service surrogacy agency and we are located in Dallas, Texas. Um, and Dallas is a very family friendly state for surrogacy. Um, a lot of people are unaware that two men go directly on the birth certificate in Dallas as long as they are married. So we treat gay couples the same as we treat every other couple there. Um, if you are not married, if you do not have a partner, do not worry, that is fine too. We have done many single surrogacies in Texas as well. So it's actually a really good state for people to come to. Um, little things that are different about surrogacy for us in Texas is we are a local small agency um, and that means that everyone in our agency has been through the process one way or the other from the other side of it. I have been an egg donor twice. My partner Stephanie who is not able to be here today has been a surrogate three times. Our psychologist is an intended father through surrogacy twice through our program. So everyone that you speak to and work with in our program has been through it from your side from the other perspective and can help you on your way. Um, we do no forced matching in our program. Every match that we have is based on personality and what you are looking for in your surrogate match and what your surrogate is looking for in her match. So you're going to fill out an extensive profile on what you're looking for, the things that you would like to see, the level of contact you prefer, if there's a state you prefer your surrogate live in, and we're going to do the same thing for the surrogate. Her profile is just like yours, only way more extensive because we get all her medical and pregnancy records. And so once we have those two things, we're going to look at the preferences, what she wants, what you want, and together we're going to find a really good match between you. Um, we've got one of the shortest matching times right now available. Our average matches are about three months. Um, we've matched people in way less time. The people who spoke downstairs, Jay and Victor, 13 months from the time they signed with us until delivery. And that's not an anomaly. 18 months is our average, but we've matched people in as little as a week. And if you are very picky, it might take six months. But in most cases, we're, we're moving very quickly. So I know we don't have a lot of time. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. So if anybody wants to ask any questions, I can answer questions or I can just keep talking. Yes? Why is the, your matching uh, time so lower than some of the other ones? So I th I think a lot of that is based on that we don't do forced matching, that we have personality matches, and that we allow the surrogates a lot of say in who they match with. So our matching process is you're going to complete your profile, and the surrogate is going to pick first. Um, that way, when you see your profile, you know she already likes you. She has read up your profile. She likes what she sees, and you're going to see her profile. You can still turn her down. We'll find another surrogate who likes your profile too, but she gets as much say in the process as you do. We're not going to say, surrogate A, you're next in line, you're matching with these guys because it's really important that it's a emotional match as well. And I think a lot of that is because my partner Stephanie is a previous surrogate. She knows what surrogates need and are looking for. She knows why they sign up. And in 90% of the cases, that's for an emotional journey with the parents. They're not in this for the money, believe it or not. It's not nearly enough money to pay for the amount of work that they do day in and day out to carry a healthy baby to term for you. So they're looking for the emotional connection. And I feel like we're one of the agencies that really cares about their experience just as much as we care about yours. Yes? Where are most of your surrogates uh, located geographically? They're located all over the United States. Obviously, we have a large portion in Texas because we are based there and we do a lot of recruiting events there. It's also a really strong state for surrogacy law, so everyone knows that they're really protected there. But we've got surrogates in every state where surrogacy is legal, East Coast, West Coast. Um, just Texas is pretty good because we're there and it's a very affordable state. You had a question. Uh, it was actually to do with uh, where your surrogates are because you were talking about the um, birth certificate of, uh, yes. of the intended parents being on the birth certificate. Yes, and that happens in Texas and that happens in a lot of other states, Pennsylvania, Florida, Nevada, California. Those are all pretty good states that get both parents on the birth certificate. Um, there are more than that I could keep listing, but we've actually got um, paperwork downstairs that shows states and also on our website in terms of color. So dark green is awesome. They have laws in place. A judge cannot change their mind. They can't say, oh, I don't like that couple. I'm not going to sign their pre-birth order. Light green means there is case law. Pretty good. They're probably not going to change their mind. California is one of those states. It's a pretty good state. They've been doing it there for a long time. It's going to be fine. But there are states that are yellow, like Arizona. Um, there are people here who have been through surrogacy in Arizona who just two years ago, it was fine. Well, six months ago, the judges there changed their minds. They are no longer signing pre-birth orders. So you have to really be careful if you're going through a state where there is no statute law in place. I'm not saying it's going to happen where they're changing their minds, but you just have to be aware that that is a possibility. So, anybody else? Yes? Are there advantages to having the agency you choose be in the state you live in? No, I don't think so. I think you should choose the agency that is the best fit for you. Um, we work with clients who we've never met. 
Um, I've got clients who are in Tel Aviv that I don't, I've never been to Tel Aviv. My partner has, but I've never met them. Um, we work with people who we never actually meet face to face in person. So much of the world now can be done electronically and digitally that I can Skype and feel like we're in the same room. So I don't think there's an advantage one way or the other. Yes? Well, in that regard, what about your surrogates? How do you um, make that connection with surrogates that are out of state? So we have coordinators that are based all over the country. Um, so basically regional coordinators. We've got a coordinator in California. I've got one in Illinois. I have several in Texas. I have one in Florida, Pennsylvania. They're spread out. So your surrogate, if she lives in Pennsylvania, is going to have a Pennsylvania coordinator. And she's going to have the ability to interact with that coordinator as a representative of our agency every week at a minimum and as often as they want. Um, and these coordinators have all been previous surrogates through our program. So they've got personal firsthand experience to connect with your surrogate. Um, and you will be as well. I mean, you'll be having contact with your surrogate and, and being in contact with them. So we have most, most of our relationships, people are not near their surrogates. So we try to have a really good coordination relationship that we can keep them connected. Mm -hmm. Yes? A lot of it is based on where we're based. Um, so as you know, things are just more expensive here on the East Coast, and they are more expensive on the West Coast. I grew up in Connecticut, so I know what things are like here. You know, my parents moved down to Texas five years ago just because everything there is cheaper. We have no state sales tax, so that takes 10% off the top of everything immediately. I went down the store to buy a gallon of milk here. I mean, are you kidding me? It's like seven fifty, or I mean, I know it's Manhattan too, so that plays into it, but. <laughs> in Texas, my milk is three ninety nine a gallon. You know, what I mean, it, that is that is a big part of it. Is that cost of living? Everything is less there. So we're in the central of the country too. We're centrally located. If your clinic's in California, I'm only two hours behind them. If your clinic's in Connecticut, same thing. I'm only two hours behind them. So because we're centrally located, we've got a lot of advantages to being in the center. Cost is just one of the foremost ones. In addition, we're a smaller. We have less overhead. Uh, if you come to see my office in Texas, it is not a big, flashy skyscraper office like some of these people have. But most of you will never come there. And so I'm not going to pay the rent for that office that you will then pay for when you hire me. You know, I've got a nice office. Don't get me wrong. You can come visit me if you want. But it's not a flashy skyscraper office. So we spend the money where I think it's really important. We spend the money on coordinators. We spend the money on our staff. And we spend the money putting back in for GPAP and things like that. I mean, we pitch the most to GPAP. And I think the thing that makes our agency really different is I want you to have a baby. And ultimately, if that comes down to money out of my pocket to help you get there, I have done that in more cases than I can even count. Um, there's a couple downstairs right now that had a rough journey that is on their third surrogate. And we actually refunded their entire fee that they had paid us as regular clients when they qualified for GPAP. I can tell you there's no other agency that will do that after working on their case for a year to give them all their money back. Now, I'm not going to do that for everybody because you all are not going to have problems. Um, but I think that I think that but I think that shows how much we really do care and because we are a small corporate structure you know you're dealing with myself and owner or Stephanie and owner you can pick up the phone and call us and you're speaking to people who are decision makers who have the ability to say yes you know what I feel like they deserve that they qualified let's get them through this program so that's what you're getting with us is a smaller corporate structure yes Um, no, I don't think so. I think we have more surrogates than anybody else right now. Donors is a, it's a database based thing. So I think as long as you know where to recruit donors from, then you're going to get donors from, from all over the country and from everywhere you are. But, um, you, we're, we're smaller than some other agencies, but just in terms of our staff handles more clients in a more personal manner. So like we have one main intended parent coordinator that talks to all of our intended parents, but that way, we're also not trying to say, oh, which intended parent do you have and who did you talk to? I think there's a lot less confusion. So we have streamlined processes. I know who to call when I need to talk to someone because we know who the main people are. So, anybody else? Um, how, I guess, how do you, how do you screen your service? We screen, I think most clinics probably screen the same way. Um, but our process is, so the surrogate applies on our website. She's going to fill out that giant profile I talked about. It's like 15 pages. Um, she's going to fill out her medical history. The first step is we read that and we say, 
hey, she looks pretty good, or, oh, I don't know, she had two miscarriages, she didn't carry that one to term, she had gestational diabetes. So if she makes it past that point, if her profile passes muster, then the next thing we do is run a background check on her and make sure that she has no criminal history and she has good credit and she's not on state assistance or anything like that. Um, once she passes that point, then we're gonna do a psychological evaluation on her, and make sure that she is in this for the right reasons and that everything that she has said is true and she understands the journey. Um, we have a one-on-one -on -one interview with her from a peer, uh, one of our coordinators has a one-on-one -on -one interview, asks her all the questions um, that we normally ask of surrogates, and then makes her ask us questions to make sure that she has read all of our program information and understands what she's going through. So that's the first step. That happens all before you ever see a profile. Um, so I would say maybe 30 to 40 percent get through that stage. Then we collect all their medical records and we send them to one of the reproductive endocrinologists that we work with and they will review those records and say either yes looks pretty good or I don't know I'm not sure I would want to see her I want to do a mock cycle on her etc. So we'll know that before we even send the records to your particular clinic. And so then once she is chosen by you and you have your phone call then she's going to go to the actual clinic of your choice where she'll be medically screened and they will do all the medical screening at your clinic of choice. And so at that point, once they pass that, they've been pretty thoroughly vetted and you know, you've liked them on the phone and hopefully in person. Yes? That was easy. Gosh, you guys are all gonna <laughs> sign up then, right? Good, so no problems. So yeah, I mean, that's our basic journey and that's our basic process is um, if you did want more information, we'd be happy to send you like a big stack of an email that lays out our agency information, our agency guidelines, how we work. We've got a really great document that we call the what to expect document um, that kind of walks you, yeah, just like the what to expect when you're expecting, only this is when someone else is expecting for you. But it really breaks down the process kind of step by step, what things you might be thinking about, what questions you might have, what the next step is. And we really use that as a baseline guide through our whole program. Um, so you guys can read that. Yes? Oh yes, we work with all bunch of people. Um, some people even come to us and say, hey, we found a surrogate on a chat board, can you screen her for us and find out if she's okay? And we've even done that. Um, we have coordination programs with people, If say if you knew your surrogate, if you were friends with her and you wanted to bring her in, we can handle that with a coordination only program. Um, we also do a matching only program if, for example, you've been an intended parent before and you know how the whole thing runs and you really just wanna be matched with a surrogate and you don't need all the other stuff, we have a program for that well. Um, but a lot of people come to us with embryos already created and or their clinic already chosen and we match them with a surrogate and handle the process from there. And have you, uh, do you have any experience handling um, the embryos if they come from another country? Yes, all the time. They're shipped here all the time to the clinics. Yes, we can recommend facilities that can help ship them over for you and store them at the clinic until your surrogate is ready for them. Yep, but we've shipped from Ireland, which is the worst place to ship from. It took two and a half years, don't do that. But if you're coming from the UK and London, um, from Israel, we've shipped embryos from all those places, it's not an issue. Yeah, and we can recommend a place that can be the courier for you and they go t directly to your clinic. But yes, that's not uncommon. And you handle, uh, I heard earlier today in regards to some kind of FDA testing that needs to be, Yes, if the embryos were created in another country, then they would need to undergo FDA testing when they get here. Your clinic would be the one to do that, but yes, we can make sure that they do all that testing when they get here. Yep. Yes, yes? We work with every clinic, and there's basically no clinic downstairs that we do not work with. Um, the one that we work with a lot is Fertility Center of Las Vegas, and they've just recently opened up a center here in New York, which I love, for testing intended fathers who are here, who you never have to go to Vegas ever. I mean, if you want to come to Vegas, you can, but you don't have to. Um, another one we work with is CT Fertility. The, you, the transfer cannot be done here, but you can do your sample here and your surrogate can come here for her screening. We did that recently with a couple from London. They flew them from London, their surrogate flew in, they met, they had dinner, had their testing done, and then everybody went home. Um, five minutes, okay. So it's very, it's very simple to do, to, to work with that clinic because they've got a lot of locations. Um, another clinic is CT Fertility, Dr. Doyle, he's fantastic really great pregnancy rates and just down the road in Connecticut. Um, we also worked with ORM in Oregon, reproductive medicine. Oregon's a little bit out of the way, but they're a great clinic. Um, La Jolla in California. Um, people come to us with their clinics and they say, we really wanna work with XYZ clinic. We're like, great, no problem. You've chosen them for your own personal reasons. We can work with literally any clinic. If you come to us and you say, who do you work with the most? Those three, those four are probably the most that we work with.
that, that we see really good results from and we have a really good relationship with the doctors. But there's no one we can't work with. Yes? Do you have a personal opinion on the whole debate over twins or not twins? Um, and, uh, do you also yes. do any arrangements regarding the sibling twins? Yes, we do. Um, I think a lot of it depends on what you're looking for. If you are two men together and you would like to have twins, one from each, that is certainly the least expensive way to go. Um, you do have to un be understand and be aware that there are increased risks, both to early delivery and the pregnancy and the surrogate needing bed rest, and you just have to account for those in your budgeting. So you can say, hey, it's only five grand extra for twins. That is not the case, because you have to add in, there is bed rest. She will be on bed rest at some point with twins, whether that's in the beginning because she has some kind of a bleed with the transplant, very, very common. Um, or it's at the end because she's gigantic and she's carrying twins. IVF babies tend to be bigger. So if you have twins, just count on at least four weeks of bed rest. So if she's a working mother, you have to factor that into your costs. Um, and so you also have to factor in she's going to need housekeeping. She can't bend over. She's got a giant belly. Um, things like this that, that a lot of people fail to account for. They just see the $5,000 extra. And there's also additional doctor's appointments. So you're going to have maybe a perinatologist. So you're going to have perinatologist bills. Um, there might be in the NICU when they were born. Even if they're born a few days early with twins, that's much more of a difference. Um, you may have to stay longer in the state where they're born because you can't just take a three-day-old twin home. You have to wait at least two weeks till they're checked up in most cases. So those are all considerations. If you know that you would rather do one at a time, I think the best way to do it is to do one egg donor retrieval cycle, split the eggs, each of you do half, but then you save one partners. And so you do one guy first, and then two, uh, two years later, whenever you're ready, you come back and you do the second guy. And the second journey is going to be substantially cheaper. If you go through us and you use the same surrogate, we're only going to charge you $6,000 for our agency fee for everything for the second journey. So most people get out for a sibling journey with the same surrogate for around fifty to sixty thousand dollars. So when you equate that cost-wise with what you cost if you got twins the first time, you're maybe only ten thousand dollars cheaper with twins the first time than you would be with doing a sibling journey, just because of the risks and the bed rest and the medical and the blah blah blah. So yeah, yes. Yes, we do. Um, we work with Prosper Healthcare Lending, which is a really great company. Um, they've got a website with all of their um, information and structure on it. So you can go to their website and look at what deals they have. And we've got, we, we pay for a membership with them so you can use their funds to our program. Is that fairly common or do a lot of people pay out of their own? It's very common, yes. It's very common for people to use the financing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very common. And that's one of the questions that we actually ask on the profile of the surrogates is, if this goes well, are you open to doing another journey? So you would see that on their profile. And if you're really looking for someone with a sibling journey, we will take that in consideration when matching you, if you know that that's something you definitely want. Now, things do change. So let's say you matched with your surrogate, you had a great pregnancy, and then she moves to New Jersey. Well, you can't do surrogacy in New Jersey. So obviously, you're going to need a new surrogate. And we're going to give you a discount off of that, because we know that's not your choice. We're not going to say it's the whole agency fee again. No, 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 no. We know you. We've worked with you. We've run your escrow. We're familiar. So we're going to give you a discount off of that. And that's all built into our paperwork as well, too. I mean, we're not going to say it's the whole price again if your surrogate moves and you wanted to use her again.